I want to begin this video by thanking EasyCAD Solutions for giving me permission to reproduce this design on my channel. If you are interested, please check out the original video done on SOLIDWORKS using the link below. For the sake of full disclosure, I did face an issue with combining the two halves at the very last step. This might be due to some minor geometric imperfections. I was not able to get this resolved before the release of the video. I do apologize for this. If this is not a deal breaker for you, let's start the tutorial. Start a sketch on the top plane. We will be drawing two pentagons. We will to create polygon. It does not matter whether you choose circumscribe or inscribe, since we will be dimensioning the edge. Center this on the origin. At this moment, you will be prompted to enter a radius. We are going to skip that by pressing tab and entering the number of sides, which is 5 for a pentagon. Draw a smaller pentagon within. Control select these two lines. Right click and make them vertical. Box select all entities. Press X to change to construction. Draw a smaller pentagon within. Again, make this edge vertical. Draw a line joining these two points. Control select these two lines. Right click and make them equal in length. Draw another line joining these two points. Change this edge back to a solid line by selecting it and pressing X. That completes the sketch on the top plane. Start a sketch on the front plane. Let's create two anchor points by using the intersect command. Go to create, project include, intersect. If we hover the cursor over this edge, we get a preview of the projected point in red. This is the point where this edge intersects with the sketch plane. Click to place that point. Do the same for this edge. Draw a vertical line and a slope line to join these two points. Start the polygon command and draw a hexagon that is centered on this point. Press tab and enter 6 for a hexagon. Control select this point and this edge of the hexagon and right click to add a midpoint constraint. Dimension the edge of the hexagon to 50. This concludes the sketch on the front plane. Activate the surface tab. Go to create, patch. Select the hexagonal profile to build a patch surface. At this point, the sketch on the front plane gets hidden automatically. Let's unhide it. We will be rotating the new patch surface using this sketch line as an axis. Go to Modify, Move Copy. For Move Object, select Bodies and select this surface. For Move Type, Select Rotate. For Axis, select this sketch line. We are going to rotate the surface by 90 degrees. Next, go to Construct, Axis Perpendicular to Face at Point. Select the hexagonal surface and its center point. This creates an axis normal to the surface at the center. You are free to drag on the end point of the axis to make it easier to see. We need to create a point that marks the intersection between this newly created axis and the Y axis. Go to Construct, Plane through two edges and select the two axes. 
This establishes our center for the spherical shape. Let's create a sketch on the hexagonal surface. Draw a smaller hexagon with the same center. Make this edge horizontal. Draw a pair of lines joining these points as follows. Make these two lines equal in length. Confirm the sketch. Let's hide the surface. We are going to make a series of lofts from the sketches we have made to the center point. We will be using these four profiles. Activate the Solid tab. Go to Create, Loft. Select the Pentagon as the starting profile and this point as the ending profile. Confirm and hide the body. After the loft, the top sketch will automatically be hidden. Unhide and repeat the same lofting process for the next three profiles. At the end of the process, you should have four separate bodies. Go to Modify, Combine, and combine these two bodies. We need to trim the bodies to achieve three panels as such. In the preview, I used a series of four revolved faces to split the lofted bodies, but I found this to be quite confusing to manage due to the sheer number of surfaces and solid bodies involved. So let's do it in a different way. Let's hide the bodies for the moment and start a sketch on the front plane. Create a center point arc. Keep in mind that this is the center of the final spherical shape. Snap to it and draw a 90 degree arc. Dimension it. Let's create an offset. We have to create another two offsets. Take note that Fusion does not allow for offsets of existing offsets. So do take reference from the original arc. Control select these two construction lines and press X to change them to solid so that we have profiles to work with. Unhide the bodies. Let's perform a revolved cut. Go to Create, Revolve. Select the innermost profile. For axis, click on the select box and select this line. Fusion detects this as a cut. Unhide the sketch. Now we need to make a trim on the outside. There is actually no need to create an outer boundary. Pre-select these three profiles. Start the revolve command again. For operation, select intersect. Fusion automatically computes the intersecting volume between the revolve and any bodies that it crosses paths with. To create the layered features, we need to split each of these bodies. Let's pre-select these two lines. Activate the Surface tab. Go to Create, Revolve. 
select the axis. We will use these surfaces as cutting tools to split the bodies. Go to Modify, Split Body. For bodies to split, select the three bodies. For splitting tools, click on the select box and select these two hemispherical faces. Hide the surface bodies. We will be performing a series of shell operations to create this layered effect. To make our selections more easily, go to Select, Selection Priority, Select Body Priority. This is essentially a selection filter to allow us to select only bodies. Control select these three bodies. Right click and isolate. Go to Modify, Shell. We need to create a ring with a thickness of 2mm all around. To do that, we need to select both sides of each panel. Set the thickness and confirm. Right click in space and unisolate. Next, isolate these three bodies. and repeat the shell operation with a different thickness. For the last shell operation, we do not need the shell to go through the whole body. So just select these three faces and adjust the distance. Go to Modify, Combine, and combine each of these bodies into a single panel. Repeat this for the other two panels. Next, Add fillets. We need to split the center panel into two. Go to Construct, Plane through two edges. And select these two edges. We shall use this plane to split the body. Let's orientate ourselves and go to the default isometric view. Make sure that you unhide the three bodies. This axis and the origin. Hide everything else. We shall go on to do a series of circular patterns. Go to Create, Pattern, Circular Pattern. We are going to pattern this side of the split around the pentagon. For type, choose bodies. Select this body. For axis, click on the select box and select the Y axis. Set the quantity to 5. We shall combine the pentagon and the patterned bodies into one. Repeat the same process to pattern this side of the split around the hexagon.
we have created a pentagonal and a hexagonal panel. They will serve as the seeds for creating the spherical shape. Let's pattern the hexagon around the pentagon. Let's return to the default isometric view. Go to Modify, Move Copy. For Move Objects, select Bodies and select these two panels. For Move Type, select Rotate and select this axis. Check on Create a Copy. We shall create a copy that is rotated 120 degrees. Next, pattern these two bodies about the y-axis. Go to Modify, Combine, and combine all these bodies into one. This forms half of the sphere that we are trying to create. We need to mirror this across the center. Go to Construct, or Set Plane. Select the top plane and select the center point. This creates a construction plane parallel to the top plane at the center of the sphere. We will use this as a mirror plane. Go to Create, Mirror. For Type, select Bodies and select the body. For mirror plane, click on the select box and select the newly created construction plane. In the preview, you can see that the mirrored body overlaps with the original body at certain regions. We need to make sure that the mirrored body does not merge with the original body. So set the operation to new body. Go to Modify, Move Copy, and rotate the mirror body about the Y axis by 36 degrees. What if we wanted to create a perforated look like this? Let's OK the third shell feature and edit. At this point, you can press the Ctrl key and add these three faces. This causes the shell to go all the way through. Once you confirm, the model regenerates accordingly. As mentioned at the beginning of the video, I was not able to successfully combine the two halves into one single body. When I perform the combine command, the command actually completes without any error message. However, as you can see from the split lines and the bodies folder, there still exists two separate bodies. If you are able to resolve this, please do let me know in the comments below.